President Joe Biden has given us a little stocking stuffer this Christmas, um, extending the pause on student loans until May 1st. So that's good, I think. Uh, a little bit more time. The payments were set to restart in February, if you guys remember. Uh, but now we have until May uh, to convince him to just cancel it because nothing is going to happen between now and May when it comes to convincing Joe Manchin to do literally anything. So just cancel student loan debt, just get just 10, 15, 50,000, how about all of it? Um, but in case you guys needed a little refresher for those of you who are or are not mired in these debts, 43.2 million student borrowers in the United States averaging $39,351 each. The outstanding federal loan portfolio is over $1.59 trillion. And you could see, let's just go to this graph of debt. I mean, compared to credit card debt, Home equity debt, obviously, it's like, how the hell are we gonna have home equity loans if we can't pay off our student loans? Let's, you know, put the cart in front of the horse here, people. But by far, the sources of debt um, among borrowers is student loans, the highest source of debt. Um, so, given all that, President Biden woke up a little bit, not extending this the child tax credits, but the student loan. Um, uh, pauses. So he ran, he he said, given these considerations, today my administration is extending the pause on federal student loan repayments for an additional 90 days through May 1st, 2022, as we manage the ongoing pandemic and further strengthen our economic recovery. Yes, um, borrower ba balances have effectively been frozen for more than a year, so no payments required on federal loans since March 2020, and the interest has stopped adding up. Which is really important. That's unlike a lot of um, eviction moratoriums and rental deferments. Um, saving the average borrower about $2,000 over the first year and collections on defaulted debt have also been on hold. So, I mean, this is the difference between people keeping their homes, being able to feed their families, and not being able to plan for the future and not. Um, but it's very far from what he said during. Campaign Biden, right? Okay, so campaign Biden, a lot of people are like, he promised to cancel student debt. He promised, he did actually promise to cancel student debt. He didn't promise to cancel all of it. But this is him on the campaign trail uh, speaking to a young, a young former student who has, is strapped with debt. Um, he said to this person, I'm gonna eliminate your student debt if you come from a family making less than $125,000 and went to a public university. Biden also said, I'm going to make sure everyone gets $10,000 knocked off their student debt in response to economic hardships caused by the pandemic. So, okay, the average borrower saved $2,000. So we've got six more years, no, five more years to get to that point where you knock off $10,000. I don't know. Like, there's, there's a lot to be done, Joe, um, but it is progress. Brett, your response. So, this is. There's a lot of different ways to look at debt and when you're chucking numbers around. The number, the amount of debt you forgive is actually corresponds to a much larger amount of money that you would end up having to have paid. So if you take a student, if you have interest on any debt, let's say I take out a, a ten, a hundred thousand dollars. Whatever my interest rate is, it's not that I just pay that plus my interest rate of a, you know, 17%, depending on what kind of loan you have, 6%, 2%, whatever, what kind of payment you have to do. That compounds every year. So if you forgive $10,000 of student loan debt, you could be, for depending on how long your payment schedule is, you could save that person $20,000 over the course of them having to pay it back. Now, when you pause that, those people are just not paying $2,000 now. You're not taking away from the amount they're going to have to repay back because you're not forgiving any of it. Right. So this is just, just kind of kicking it. the can down the road, which is something that like when we talk about putting awesome new government programs in place, the reason people fight against that is because people realize like Medicare, it's better than private insurance for all its flaws. You're gonna have, you know, it becomes a third rail of politics. So Social Security is the original third rail of politics. People like it. You talk about getting rid of it, Republican, Democrat, whoever it is, you lose massive amount of votes. Um, so 
That's why they don't want to put them in place. But the way that the government can get into um, kind of not suffering the backlash from their donors of forgiving the debt is to do this, kick the can down the road five months at a time. Now yeah. that creates uncertainty that ends up also tanking the financial market. That dynamic is also at play when it comes to the debt ceiling, when it comes to the uh, the national, the federal budget, when they do these continuing resolutions to, to fund the government mm -hmm. instead of like an omnibus bill that would go for a year, two years, 10 years, they can do that. But they are such political wuss bags. And not and that they don't realize the positive feedback they'd get by forgiving student loan debt, which Francesca just proved affects a ton of people. They think yeah. that 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 getting that support from a ton of people is not as politically beneficial uh, to counteract losing the support of their donors, who are frequently, especially in Joe Biden's case, Chris Coons' case, and the other Democratic senator in a in a state that prides itself on no corporate tax. Like you would, you would alienate a ton of people who are your political donors. Yeah, and it doesn't. Here's my thing with eliminating student debt, though. Like, I I do think they're going to alienate some political donors, but like this is all federally held debt. So, and you don't hear Republicans railing like, "How dare he?" Blah. blah. I mean, they would if he did anything, but the, you don't hear about like the big. You know, federal student debt lobby that wants to continue having Americans pay. You know, pay and pay and pay and pay, and like it's like I, it is kind of politically a win for him in my book. I mean, it definitely would do huge. It would be incredible for his numbers and his approval rating, especially for people who voted for him. Maybe holding their nose, thinking that, especially young folks who are like generally skew progressive, are maybe were Bernie voters. Um, this is a way to get them back. So on a political level, I think it makes sense. Um, he has he has canceled 1.5 billion dollars in debt, but those were only for those who were defrauded by for-profit colleges. So already there was a lot involved in that. There was he he promised look, look public universities. That's where I'm knocking off the debt, and he hasn't yet done it. Um, but well, I, look, I think this is good to to delay it. I just think they need to go farther. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.